Hey, good evening. Welcome to Facebook Live. This is Kathy Beatty with Divorce Support Anonymous. Thank you for joining me tonight. Important topic, as always. Would love for you to join in the conversation. Send me a comment. Give me a call. I've got some information up here. Uh, you can text me, of course, if you'd like. Uh, realizing it is on a public site and a private group site together. Uh, so um, if you have a question, though, I would love to hear it. You can certainly text me or even call. <clears throat> would love to have a conversation with you. That really is what this is all about, is getting information in your hands, in your mind, and in your heart so that you can get through the trauma of divorce, get on the other side of divorce, create a life that is beautiful, and a life that you love. It is possible. I've seen it so many times over the past 15 years. Those people who thought they would never, ever be happy again or find fulfillment in their life, they did. You know why they did so quickly? Because they did it intentionally. They sought support. They sought people to help them through the trauma of divorce. Just like if you were to have a... Um, a car accident, you would never expect to get yourself through that on your own. Well, a divorce is a trauma, like a car accident, that requires help. You need those people in the legal area, the emotional area, the, the spiritual area. You need those people. You need to develop that team. I love the topic tonight. The topic is why bashing your ex doesn't help you heal. I brought this topic because I'm reminded of uh, one woman in particular stands out in my mind. I've had many over 15 years. Those who simply cannot stop bashing their soon-to-be former spouse or their former spouse. I understand where you're coming from in this. And we'll talk about it and we'll talk about the reason why. But I want you to know that there is a point to where it stops being healthy and it stops being grieving and it becomes an obsession uh, to where it is hurting you. And we don't want that. Uh, this is causing enough damage. So we want to deal with this in a healthy way and to get beyond it. I love this quote uh, that came from Nancy Collier. We hold on to our pain in an effort to figure out how to let it go. So when we are bashing, we really are trying to deal with the injustice, trying to sort in our mind because it seems so surreal. And many injustices have happened to many of us. And that's one way to deal with it, but it's not a healthy way. And I love the book of Ecclesiastes, and you probably have heard some of these verses at funerals. And uh, since we're dealing with divorce, the death of a marriage, it's appropriate. It talks about a time to weep, a time to give up, a time to throw away, a time to tear. Uh, this is that time. Uh, this is that time of what we're going through, uh, that we are having a time to weep, a time to give up, a time to throw away, um, a time to weep, certainly, because of the pain that what has happened to us. Now, 
when we are hit with the shock of divorce, uh, we are trying to sort it out in our mind. We're trying to get a grasp on reality because it's not real to us yet. We're in shock. So we are recounting and we are continuing to uh, talk about, hopefully you're not hiding, keeping all of this inside of you, but we are processing this. And, and in, in that process, we may get stuck and we may begin to ruminate. It's called a psychological term to where we go around and around and around and we keep bashing, bashing the, the former spouse because of what has happened. Um, and it, it's circular and it does not help us at all because we are trying to uh, to deal with the injustice and there is a time for spilling and spewing because it matters what you are going through it matters so i'm not saying don't take the time to recount what has happened to you uh, to spew and spill as i say of all of the uh, the toxins that are inside of you right now there is a time for that. It's important, in fact, that there's a time for that, uh, that we deal with that because it does matter. But if we are doing it longer than is healthy and we find ourselves, for example, my support groups are 10 weeks long. If we're in the 10th week and you're still bashing your spouse, we, we've got a problem here. It's, it's not healthy. And so bashing or prolonged complaining is hurting many things. And one of the things that it's hurting is our brain because our brain wires itself with repeated actions and it forms these habits. What happens is the neurons are actually connecting, forming these like highways in our brains. And so our brain is easily going to fall into that path that we have created, and it can, in fact, become a permanent route. Research shows that 50% of people who have gone through divorce are still angry after 10 years. 10 years. I don't want you there in 10 years. I want you over this. I want you have well established a new life. But research shows that. That's not some speculation. Research is showing 10 years. This divorce has costed you enough time, enough pain. 10 years from now, you do not want to be in a situation where you are angry. But the brain is rewiring, and this complaining can become default behavior. Stanford University's study, studies show that constantly complaining actually shrinks the hippocampus, which is a part of your brain where you do all of your intelligent thinking, your intelligent thought, your critical thinking, your problem solving. So this bashing, this complaining actually is shrinking a portion of your brain, reducing that ability to have intelligent thought. So what we can say is if we are bashing, we're hurting ourselves, we're hurting our brain, we're hurting our capability for intelligent thought. And the hypocalmus campus is also the part of the brain where Alzheimer, the shrinking of the brain is actually what happens in Alzheimer's disease. So I tell you this because we don't want to, number one, be angry in 10 years. And number two, we don't want to be hurting our brain, ourselves, going through this trauma. Because enough has been, enough damage has been done. And have you, I always ask this question when we deal with anger uh, in the group. And it's always an interesting uh, response that I get from people. Have you ever met an angry person? that you wanted to be around, ever. Do you ever look forward to being with an angry person? No, nope. you don't. You shun them. You go away from them. 
So another way that uh, bashing your spouse or that prolonged complaining is hurting your health is that it is releasing these uh, these toxins, this, this bad hormone called cortisol uh, that is released into our body that creates stress, it creates blood pressure, blood sugar, it impacts, it impairs our immune system, we, it makes us more susceptible to high cholesterol, to diabetes, heart attacks, obesity. So listen to what I'm saying. So it's affecting our brain that we can't think. It's, it's hurting our intelligent thought. And it's also hurting our body by making us gain weight, making us more susceptible to disease. So it doesn't help us heal. When we are spending our time and energy bashing our former spouse, doesn't help us heal. So the real question is, how do we heal? How do we heal? Uh, there is this venom inside of us that needs to come out. There are some injustices in our mind and our heart that we need to deal with, that we need to try to make some sense of. We won't always understand all of it but we are trying to rationalize and figure it out in our brain. We're trying to heal. It's our, um, it's our mind, uh, such as Nancy Collier said, in effort to figure out how to let it go. And it's peculiar that we hold on to it so tightly when really we're trying to figure out how to let it go. So the real question is, how do you heal? You are going to need to grieve and talk and spill and spew for a while. Many of you don't like the idea of grief. Some of us don't even know how to grieve because it was never demonstrated to us in our family of origin. And we've always tried to be that tough person that's in control. You're hurting yourself. You're hurting yourself by not allowing that time of grief, allowing a place where you can spill and spew what you need to, to, to deal with for a while. So that's number one. Um, number two is get support. Someone to walk alongside of you to speak truth and hope into your life. You cannot only listen to your own brain because our feelings are not rational and they're not honest right now. So get the support. Um, redirect your words and thoughts to gratitude because gratitude makes your world bigger and it changes your brain. If you can redirect in gratitude and list those things that you are grateful for, instead of using that energy to be bashing your former spouse, redirect that energy to where you can find things to be grateful for. It may be your eyesight, maybe your health, it may be your ability to walk. I don't know how basic you need to get. But there's always, always, as the saying is, something to be grateful for. So redirect that energy, refocus it over to gratitude instead of bashing your former spouse. Um, uh, the next one, catch yourself when you're bashing. When you find yourself talking negatively about him or her, refocus this energy to your own future. Because when you are ruminating in all of this wrong that's happened in the past, you're living in the past. But there's a future. So if you start to say something, refocus, redirect to talk about plans for your future. And that's exactly what we do in my program. We start with 10 weeks getting you through divorce, the next eight weeks of building your life after divorce, and then five weeks of a mastermind for accountability to get us moving and creating that new life. So refocus. 
Design your life. Take that energy away from the negativity. Redirect it into a positive, positive direction. We have to be intentional right now. We cannot be a reflex to the pain that has happened to us. We must take control. There is a time to weep. There is a time to tear. But you know what? There's also, Ecclesiastes says, there's a time to plant, a time to heal, a time to build, a time to dance, a time to search, a time to mend. Going through this divorce, we will get you to the point to where you are mending, you are creating, you are taking the time to create that beautiful life that God has for you through and after this transition. Don't go through divorce alone. It is too difficult. I hope this has been of help to you. I know it has to many that I've worked with. Take care. We will see you next Friday, if not before. Um, connect with me if I can be of any help. I don't see comments here. That's okay. I'm going to keep plugging through. I, I would love your feedback of how this is helping you. Any of my um, Facebook Lives or information is helping you. It helps me to know that we're on the right path together. Have a great weekend. Take care of you. And we'll see you next Friday night on Facebook Live with Divorce Support Anonymous.